Man, I hope this is loud enough, man. Ladies and gentlemen, what is up? Azario here, and I'm here for a Let's Discuss. Now, this Let's Discuss is going to be talking about something that I have been speaking on non-stop. But because I'm the little guy, I easily get ignored, and unfortunately, my voice doesn't get heard as much as some of the more well-known people who do video game content on YouTube. But I'm not salty about it, you know, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast. But nevertheless, man, the only thing I can continue to do is be genuine, be honest, be straightforward, and uh, just be honest with everything, man, because right now I think there's more things to talk about, about as far as like, you know, video games and things like that, make sure my mic is loud enough, and um, it's just things that just needs to be said, and one of the things we're going to be talking about is let's discuss the main topic is that video game, fighting games in particular, have been sucking ass for the past, like, five years we can go easily the past five years but yeah um yeah forgive me forgive this <laughs> my nose is running i got a wisdom tooth in the back of my neck so get your laughs out of all this but this need to happen but yeah man uh fighting games have just been taking in a serious l and i know i look like i'm taking an l right now <laughs> with this tissue paper up my nose um, but yeah man uh it's just been a bad time for fighting games and it's like no matter what fighting game you've seen come out and the fighting games that are coming or the arena fighters as I call them uh, that are on their way it's like they all got a silver lining it's like they're getting dumbed down and because they're getting dumbed down it's like the overall likeness of the game just fades to the point where now you have video games that new video games that are coming out and they're dead within months and it's just like bruh there's no excuse for that you know these companies they are noticing something and unfortunately this is where you know people who actually play video games and I do say that I hate the term gamer um, I use it on a political in a political sense because that's really that's all it is it's a term that trying to include people into a community that never wanted to be there to begin with but now since there's like this this hype and this like this glow with calling yourself a gamer these days on YouTube and on Twitch, it's like, oh yeah, I play mobile games. I'm such a, g you know what I mean? It's like pretty much like the fake ones, you know, that never was a lot, never would have been able to hang in the past. But all of a sudden, we in like this light, uh, this easily acceptable society that they just accept anything, you know. I mean, I get too deep into that, but because that's a rant one in itself, but. Yeah, it's like just including people in a community that don't belong there. And they're catering to that crowd rather than a crowd that's actually supporting the game that's going to buy the DLC and that's going to go to the tournaments and things like that and um, support the game in the long run uh, by making these easy button mash combo systems that, you know, in many cases you can't turn off uh, in a... It's just not good in these games and it's like fighting games and there's more to it than that obviously and I'm gonna go by it as I speak on each of the games that I'm gonna speak on in this video um, fighting games have just been taking a serious L's and without further ado uh, let me see if I can find the picture real quick um, and you gotta forgive me they got people walking around you know being nosy as usual uh, right here so first game we want to talk about because this is like the first game that really took a turn for the worse and I think this is the one that started this whole wave of terrible fighting games to the point where we got into the point we are now because people didn't do what they should have did back then because they allowed their likeness for the legacy of the game cloud their judgment based on the game itself you know what I mean and people didn't heed the warnings back then so now like we're we're made to suffer now basically so Marvel vs. Capcom 3 The Fate of Two Worlds you know I can't remember what year it was released it was released a couple years ago but nevertheless man the main Thing that a lot of people complained about when this game was first released was that you know uh, to a lot of people the game was kind of bare bones um, 
it didn't really have much to offer outside of like you know online playing things like that but it was one of those games where you know oh another you know marvel versus capcom 2 it left such an impression on us after all these years you know you go to amazon you go to google this game is fetching like new copies like used copies they're fetching for like 500 and like 800 dollars and on one website i think it went almost up to like a thousand dollars on marvel versus capcom 2 so marvel versus capcom definitely has a strong presence in the history of fighting games and it's just you know one of those uh franchises that you know when you see the name marvel vs capcom you know it's going to be epic and unfortunately marvel vs capcom 3 um you know it lacked something i don't know what it was i think when people first started playing it it was okay but then it became like less and less enjoyable because i don't know what what it was exactly because me personally i only watched the tournaments i never watched the uh like, like i never bought the game myself because something told me not to get it and you're gonna see later on in this video where i kind of ignored that voice that was telling me not to get a lot of the games and, and it ended up biting me in the ass later on because for whatever reason i wanted to give games a chance hoping that i was wrong and i was right even more so than what i thought i was but the gameplay a lot of people said like damn near everybody said that it was fun to play besides the people who was making money off it like via prize money at tournaments or the company itself they're not going to say anything any goddamn way but for like the third party people who weren't so blindly loyal to the marvel versus capcom legacy they were saying that the game is fun to play it's fun to watch but it's not fun to play they had infinite combos they had uh, these broken combo loops, you know, which Marvel vs. Capcom is somewhat known for because they had them in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but it was like you only seen a few characters do them, you know, so it wasn't like everybody could just pull them off. You know, when you see Marvel vs. Capcom 2 tournaments, they always pick a certain number of characters. They always pick Sentinel, Storm, Magneto. Every once in a while, you might get a Ken, you might get a Wolverine, you might get an Akuma, you know, but the main three storm magneto sentinel because people like to play broken and abused characters and it wasn't any different than this it was like it was the same nonsense they didn't try to fix anything they didn't try to balance anything out they just put the game together and it was just like poof here you go another marvel versus capcom and the thing that really kicked this game in the ass the main thing that really fucked this game over was that only mere months later i mean mere months later Capcom released Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which kind of screwed over everybody that may have just went and purchased, um, you know, the original Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And this one, you know, I think it introduced like a, like the X Factor system. Like again, again, I stayed away from this one because something just told me don't get it, and I didn't get it, and it it, it paid off. I'm glad I didn't buy into it. But um, you know, it was still. It still left a bad taste in people's mouths to the point where, like, you look back on it now, it's like, what were they thinking with this game? You know what I mean? It just wasn't, like I said, it's fun to watch, but it's not fun to play. It's not fun to have little to no defensive options when it comes to games like this. When, even if you do get caught in a combo, you want to know that the combo is going to eventually end. These motherfuckers got touch of death combos to where it's like, okay, one, one counter hit into, like, 100% damage. That's, like, that's stupid in any type of fighting game you know you need defensive options to where the person who's on the receiving end of those combos has a method to getting out besides just mash an x factor or you know there's got to be like some like a gravity setting that prevents the character from constantly getting like otg the otg system oh my god that was the one thing that made me really not want to get this even after they came out with ultimate because it's like the OTG system was so bad and so broken. Like you would stay on the ground for like five seconds, like a good three to five seconds, and there was you could still get an OTG off of that. That is fucking stupid. Like, dude, I'm on the ground already. How are you still able to knock me up and do another full combo? Like that makes no damn sense. Into a level three at that and just do a hundred. You know, the game was bad. The game was bad. Be happy if you didn't buy this. But getting on to the next game. Street Fighter 5. What do I ha what can't I say about Street Fighter 5 that hasn't been said already? Th when they first came up with this game, you know, they had this big um campaign talking about rise up. I wish they would have rose up to some common sense and realized that this game was shit. 
and the game is steel shit after all this time even after all the patch notes at the patchworks they came out with an arcade edition or a free update and all that other nonsense they still has the game was bare bones as hell so much so that they had to release uh an additional like story mode um for the game i don't know how long in between the release of street fighter 5 and the story mode uh you know, I, I don't know the time frame in between, but for sure they did release this game with that was dry as hell. It was bare bones, and you know, a, an additional a, a, in addition to the um, just the way that the overall game was designed, it was just bad. It was just bad, terrible. They didn't make it right. You know, Ryu was garbage in this game. He's even more trash now in today's uh, season, which is season three he's even more garbage now than he was when the game first came out to the point where it's like he has literally no options this is like your flagship character if you want to learn the game you pick Ryu you know just to get a feel of the game and if the if the flagship character is like trash then you know what I mean and then they put Fong in the game who was just he was just a bad character altogether. and uh, Dude, and the V reversal system is so is so bad in this game. Like I don't even do V reversals when I play this game, cause it's like you can get grabbed. Like I didn't grab so many people out of their V reversals. It's only like a, a a select few characters that have like actual useful V reversals in this game, to the point where it's like I don't know. It's like the characters that have the like the good view reversals they might not be your playstyle at all so you just asked out with the you know with the fucked up ones so it's just like this game has been a disappointment since its release and it's now even more of a disappointment with anti air straight jabs like i don't like they have crouching straight jab attack i mean straight punches like just straight punches not going up to where it would logically make sense for it to be an anti-air i'm talking about crouching straight jabs that, that counts as anti-airs and despite them saying that they fixed the hitboxes to where they lowered them to where it, it shouldn't do that you still get the anti-airs it's, it's just like bruh like y'all didn't know what the hell y'all was doing next game tekken 7 what can i say about tekken 7 that um well, first and foremost, the main thing that people are complaining about are the rage arts. Rage arts. The rage drives are pretty cool. You know, they're not necessarily OP like that, but the rage arts is like the factor that really is killing, that really killed the game for a lot of people in the get goes. Like, really, supers and Tekken. Like, like, I understand why they did it. They're trying to get people prepared for the fact that, you know, Tekken characters have supers because they wanted something to rival the, the, the supers in Street Fighter due to them you know biding their time and waiting to release the you know the, the new crossover game the original with street fighter cross tekken which i'm going to get into but they announced that they were going to do um they were going to do a tekken cross street fighter which is bringing the street fighter characters into the tekken universe and they brought akuma to kind of get to, to, to kind of act as like a guinea pig for that experiment and so far from what they can see it's been working um so I don't know when Tekken Cross Street Fighter is going to get announced for release. Maybe at this year's E3, maybe a couple years down the line. I don't know, but the Rage Arts was a factor in this game that played that left a bad taste in the people's mouth. On top of that, on console, I don't know about PC, but on console, this game is ass. Meaning that the matchmaking is so terrible, especially when it first released. Dude, you cannot find a match to save your damn life. And it's still like that to this day. Unless you have like the the ranking system, like you can't fight anybody within your ranking. You have to fight somebody that's like four or five or, you know, ranks higher than you. And that's terrible, especially when you're just now, you know, say you may not have played a fighting game before and you're jumping online for the first time. You got to go up against somebody that's been playing every Tekken game, you know, or at the very least, who's been playing this Tekken game longer than you. So you basically are outmatched from the go, from the jump. You can't even enjoy yourself and try to get a feel of the controls in, the, um, in a setting that, you know, pretty much benefits you. You can't learn around people your own skill level. So you basically are forced to face people who are better than you who learn the, the the system better uh you know um a lot sooner than you did and it's just like it's just bad man it's just bad and they tried to fix the the online matchmaking and you know it was a lot of rage quits issues a lot of people couldn't find matches you know because people seen a certain name and they knew or, or they seen like a certain name or rank and they didn't want to face that person they could just deny the request for the match um in ranked 
is that they tried to alleviate that by taking away uh, when the alert comes up that you that a match has been found they only show the connectivity like if the bars are like full or like two bar or whatever and so they took away the names they took away like the uh like the rank that that shows up the, the names and the rank that shows up on the alert that pops up and they kind of helped alleviate the problem people are able to get more matches now but it's still bad on console on PC, I don't you know from people who I'm watching on PC that, that played uh, Tekken 7 on, on the PC. It seems like they're having an easier time finding matches. And on console, how long has this game been out and we're still having this problem on console? Damn, bruh. Like, fix your shit. Or just don't make the game at all. You know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. You know, people spent their hard earned money because they believed and they, they were getting a product that was polished, that was good, and that was playable. It's not playable if you can't play a goddamn match. I'm just saying, bro. Moving on to the next game. Street Fighter Cross Tekken. <sighs> you might as well pop some popcorn for this shit. Because this right here is going to get real. When this game first came out, it was hype. It was hype around it. It was excitement around it. Due to the fact that... I want to say that around the same time they were announcing this game or when the game released they announced that Tekken Cross Street Fighter was going to be a thing too where Street Fighter Cross Tekken was bringing the Tekken characters in the Street Fighter world with Street Fighter controls and things like that the Tekken game the Tekken uh, Cross Street Fighter game was going to bring the Street Fighter characters into the Tekken world with Tekken controls and things like that so it's just like you know it was something to get excited for. Not only did you get excited for this, but you got excited for the next game as well. Now, here's where the bullshit starts. And this is where hackers save the day. And I know a lot of people don't like hackers, but the hackers did a good damn job when, when it came to this game. Before this game was released, they announced DLC. And the DLC wasn't really to be desired. I don't know. Like, I can't remember if they announced who the DLC characters were. But they announced that this game was going to have DLC. They was going to have post-game DLC, right? For whatever reason, I don't know what, you know, but the way, you know, I don't know what caused them to do this. But I guess they felt like something fishy was going on. So the hackers, um, I, I can't remember their names, I'm sorry. But they decided that they were going to hack into the game and see, um, you know, if there was any secrets in the game or whatever like that. Uh, but nevertheless... Uh, when they hacked into the game, you know, Capcom announced that Street Fighter Cross Tekken was going to have post-game DLC. When the hackers um, hacked into the game, they actually found out that this game had all the DLC characters were already in the game. Fully made, fully thing, and all that. It was just locked on disc. And so it was just like they, they, they purposely, you know, locked away certain characters in on disc, on the actual disc that you bought. They locked away and, and it was going to make you pay for the characters later on down the line with characters that are already on the, you, you know what I mean? It's just like, wait a minute, the characters are already on the disc, but I can't access them. I have to pay for it when I already paid for the disc already. When, what? And then not to mention they had that stupid gym system, which to this day, since this game has been released, I don't think they even explained what the gym system did. You can only assume that maybe it gave you like a speed boost, an attack boost, a defense boost or whatever, but it was never explained at all. It was just like you hit somebody, boom, a gym gets activated and next thing you know, like you're shining a different color and it, was, it just wasn't explained. So on top of the DLC controversy, the... You know the gym system and all the other bs it makes you not want to play a game like this l so moving on to the next game dragon ball fighters i know i know i know a lot of people like dragon ball fighters and i even played the game with some family members they like the game they enjoy the game granted that they don't play fighting games like that at all so I don't, i'm not even going to include them really but they got to get in this conversation um Dragon Ball Fighters. When this game first came out, you know I was an advent person who thoroughly disagreed with buying this game. I didn't think the game was good. I seen you know the type of bullshit that the game was bringing to the table, and I was like, you know what, dog, this game is not going to be good. It's not going to be good. The game had one button mash combos in it. It wasn't good, um, you know, on a competitive level. And then on top of that. The, the on console it had the same it had even worse problems than Tekken 7 had when it came to matchmaking you could not find a match in this game at all 
and I mean at all. Forgive me, family members coming in, they being loud, but um, you couldn't find a match in, in Dragon Ball Fighters at all. It, to, to the point where it was just so stressful that people didn't even want to play the game anymore. Now, they did whatever they did to fix it. They tried to fix it um, to where you was able to get matches in the game quicker, but it's still an issue. Excuse me, I had to blow my nose, I had to pause the video there for a second. But yeah, they tried to alleviate the problem a little bit, but it's just like... The one button mash combos are so unappealing, and then on top of that, it was no way to, to turn them off. That was the part that really killed it for me. Now, I tried to swallow my pride, and I went and I bought the game on disc, because I was like, okay, you know what, never mind, at least I can return it. Bought the game on disc, because I wasn't going to, normally I buy my games as digital, down, my fighting games as digital downloads, because I played them so much, I don't want to have to get up and start changing, you know, fighting games all the time. Adventure games and all these other type of games, I don't mind doing that with, but... Uh, with fighting games, I played them so much that I just didn't want to bother switching the game. So I buy them uh, as a digital download. Uh, but yeah, I want to, um, you know, just buy it on disc because I could just return it to the store. So I'm like, okay, fine, let me do that. Uh, I bought the game on disc and holy shit this game was worse than i thought it was i know a lot of people were saying that the game is good oh it's still great one button mash combos aren't a thing but when it, you it's like you have to force yourself not to do them because like i said a lot of people grew up in arcades uh in arcade era a lot of people that's playing fighting games today they didn't even start playing fighting games until street fighter 4 you know and probably later than that uh, but a lot of us in arcades, like the arcade cabinets that they had back then, it's like the buttons weren't as responsive as you might think, or even the games that they ported over to, uh, to home consoles, uh, like the SNES or whatever, uh, and the Sega Genesis. It's like the games weren't very um, responsive like they should have been, like, like they weren't very well polished, so much to the point where you had to pretty much like, where a lot of us, we had to develop this, this to, uh, to like double tap. The buttons in order to get the move to come out right because it's like the timing for the moves was kind of off back then and it's like you had to you know double tap just to make sure that the moves were coming out so a lot of people uh developed that habit you know of like double tapping uh, but despite that because i know for some people that's watching this oh that's a personal problem just don't learn it just unlearn the double tap you know so some of us that's like engraved in our muscle memory so we can't just like you know turn it off like right away we've been doing that for years so now it's like you no know, but regardless of the fact it's like you don't want uh simple controls in a in a fighting game like simple controls in a fighting game regardless if it's an anime fighter or whatever you don't want uh simple controls because it dumbs down uh fighting games for people who won't even really support the game like that you know what i mean it's just like and i've been avid speaking avidly about you know one button push combos not belonging in any fighting game because uh, I feel like one day they're going to get to the point where it's so prominent in fighting games that fighting games that don't have a history of having one button push combos are eventually going to get them that's my fear one day like I, 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 I fear for the day that Street Fighter gets one button push combos I fear for the day that Mortal Kombat X gets one button push combo or Mortal Kombat 11 or 13 or whatever you know games like that that don't even get one like one button push combos they're going to you know buy into it because they may see that oh more people will buy our game because the company's there about business at the end of the day you have the common sense of business you have the common sense of competition and lately the common sense of competition has been dwindling more and more uh and again, it's an uproar downstairs. They're being loud as hell. You should know this about me already. I've tried to do what I can, but it's like, it's not, it's not really too much I can do about that. But, uh, but yeah, it's like one button push combo, but they're so unappealing because you're catering to a group of people who don't really care about fighting games or video games at all. And it's just like, why would you do that? You know what I mean? That's like, it's almost like committing suicide. People are going to buy the game, they're going to play it for a little bit, and they're going to return it to the damn store. That's all they're going to do. When you put a system like that in a fighting game, 
eventually other companies are going to catch on and eventually it's going to get so big which is what i'm afraid of one day because I, I i can see it happening and i think a lot of people with enough foresight can also see it happening it's just one of those things where it's just so unappealing that it doesn't belong in any fighting game but because they're becoming more and more uh prominent in fighting games these days new fighting games are getting them you know arena fighters that's one thing you know arena fighters you can't expect them to be too complex because you have you know you know it's different from being on like a or like it's 2d plane to where you can do more you don't have as much to worry about as far as your surroundings you know in an, in an arena fighter you don't necessarily want uh, a complex button system you know because like, it doesn't work like that because you have too much to worry about at that point you know but in a in a, a 2d fighter in a 2d platform uh, you know screen setting like Dragon Ball Fighters is made it just yeah bro like it's just yeah L man and we can go on and on now my hero academia was justice this is a new this is an arena fighter you know that's coming out uh, soon I think sometime this year I want to say in the fall it's coming out or maybe at the end of the summer I don't remember when the release date was announced or if they announced the release date yet like, did they? I'm not sure they did but my Hero Academia is one justice. It's an arena fighter basically based around the anime called My Hero Academia. Uh, you know, and it features the characters from the anime, and they're still announcing characters that are going to be featured uh, in the game as well. But because of the way fighting games have been going and arena fighters have been going, you know, even with games like. Um, even with video games like. Like. Uh, like. Uh, the city of uh, Final Fantasy NT. That game has some of the worst problems I've seen in any fighting game in a long time. What I mean by that is, is that the online ranking mode is so bad in that game that you don't know whether or not you're going to get a computer partner because the game is made of you know teams of three. So you can either choose to go and rank solo and wait for two more people to join you, or you can create a party. You can still wait for one per two more people to join you if you choose to do that. But you can create a party and you can go in and rank yourself. And oftentimes, you would get computer-controlled players, which basically weren't as good as human players, obviously, who would you know join your team. In the worst-case scenario, you would get two computer-controlled players, and the other team that you're going up against would be nothing but human players. And this is like you know you lost so you gotta lose ranking points and things like that because of that and it's just like they didn't really do a good job with that the gameplay is fine for an arena fighter it's just that that online mishap i don't really know what they were thinking with that it's just you know just bad and looking at the look of arena fighters i mean when i see this game i see a game uh similar to uh what was the name that came out that had uh, the dad like the Shonen Jump uh, characters like Naruto and the one with the One Piece characters, uh, uh, the Assassination Classroom characters, the characters from uh, from Hunter Cross Hunter. Uh, like I think it was called uh, 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 J Stars Victory. I think it was called J Stars Victory, and then they had J Stars Victories Plus uh, after that. And that game kind of died real quick. I mean, it was like a flash in the pan arena fighter, and I see the same thing happening in this one. For whatever re for whatever reason, something my gun instinct is telling me this is going to be it's going to be a flash in the pan. It's going to be a quick, you know, excitement, a quick hype around it. People are going to buy it, and then it's just going to get boring after that. Like I, I just see this game being a a fail in the short term. Like it's going to be a game that's going to die out quick. I hope that I'm, I really hope I'm wrong. You know what I mean? It's just like I just. It's like with the state that fighting games are in and arena fighters are in, I'm just not too hopeful for a game like this, you know, because there, there were games that came out just like the way they're making this one that failed so quick and died so quick because one, they, they didn't have a competitive scene to keep them going uh, at all. And two, the game didn't really receive any support after the fact. So I don't see this game getting support after the fact. They may do some DLC because that's just like the, the climate that we're in with video games. You know, release a game, do DLC, end it. You know, 
these companies, they're not really putting any real effort in making a good fighting game because they see that, oh, well, we can convince people to buy these bad, shitty made fighting games and these battle royale games. What's the sense of us putting any more effort in when they're just going to, you know, buy it anyway because of the name of the, uh, of the game or whatever. Um, in this game, really what it is, it's, it's really just a cheap cash grab. That's all it is. Like, it's just a cheap cash grab. And a lot of people are not going to admit it. They're just going to look at it like, oh, My Hero Academia. Oh, I'm a fan of the anime when they're really not. Haven't watched one episode of season one, season two, or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, just a fake anime. <sighs> I just hate those people. Because it's, it's just like, you you don't really care for anime. It's like you're just trying to be a part of a crowd that you think is going to get a lot of hype around it so now you're trying to act like you've been a fan and you know what I mean like those type of people just get on my nerves I hate them so much but games like this I just don't have hope for them these days because I see them and I see them failing just like J-Star's Victory uh, J-Star's Victory did you know J-Star's Victory it was a fun game but I didn't buy it like I seen it on stream several people having it I, I just I just didn't see it as a game worth investing time and money into uh, turn this up a little bit more. I don't think you guys can hear me that well. Uh, but I just don't see it as something that's worth taking time and money, spend, uh, s excuse me, spending time and effort into, time and money into, because it's just not going to do anything. And like the short term, it's not. It's just like w when you buy a video game these days, you want to know that it has a scene that's keeping it going. And um, you're hoping that, you know, it actually goes somewhere. That way you have more of a reason to play it opposed to just, you know, dealing with all this other nonsense. So it's just just bad. And then we get to Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Lord have mercy. I can't believe, like, I I knew that this game, like, dude, you can go back to videos of me calling this game shitty. Saying his, how bad it is. The one button push combos. Oh, it was, ooh, I had an Egyptian scroll for this game as to why I didn't like this game. But... What happened was, despite me feeling that way, I wanted to give the game a chance. I really fucking did. Because, I mean, I didn't play Blaze Blue. Like, I skipped all the Blaze Blues up until now. Uh, it was a game that featured characters from another, you know, show that wasn't in fighting games before. You know, like the Ruby characters. Shout out to Roster Teeth for creating that series. Uh, Night, uh, excuse me. Um, it was another game called uh, um, Under Night Inbirth. Uh the uh, the Persona 4 arena fighting game uh, and then of course you had the Blaze Blue cast like, like the Blast Blue cast and um, it's just really one of those games where I was hoping that it was going to be better than what I thought it was because my expectations for the game were already low as hell and then on top of that me feeling that way they had this big DLC controversy again DLC controversy right where they put when they announced DLC for the game, but they announced that they were going to release the, the DLC in volumes. And they had like a good 20 volumes, but they didn't announce what you were getting in the volumes. They were just announced, oh, here's DLC for it. Voila. You know what I mean? It's just like, you didn't even know who the base roster was. And then later on down the line, it was revealed that 20 characters were going to be released. Like, they, they had announced like 40 characters were going to be released for this game. Right? And 20 characters were going to be in the base roster, and another 20 was going to be released as DLC. And like people was already feeling bad about that game and things like, you know, about the game and, and things like that. But when they announced that, that really killed it for a lot of people. And then I, I made another video stating that if they want to get people back, if they want to win people back over, they got to release uh, several DLC characters for free, which they did start doing. I don't know if they paid attention to me or if they just, you know, regardless of the fact, you know, I... I had I was speaking on it before they did it like a month or so before they did it so I'm just saying and sure enough they, they started to release free DLC characters it wasn't as many as I want because I said 10 like release 10 DLC characters for free and you know you could sell the rest uh, that was my idea but I think they released like what eight eight DLC characters for free don't quote me on that I think it was like really five or something like that but you know you know it it was a start to damage control all the bullshit that they did so i like okay i see them trying let me play the game let me pre-order it because the people who pre-ordered the game they were able to access the beta for free and i kind of let my better judgment you know get the better of me and uh 
like I kind of ignored my better judgment to try to give the game a chance and one button push combos a whole bunch of other bullshit that I didn't like about the game the only redeeming quality about the game and I do give it credit especially the, the, the fact that I experienced this during the beta is the one thing that makes me happy uh, about this game is that I, I was playing against people that had zero bar connections and the gameplay was smooth despite what I feel about you know uh, the one button push combos and all that other dumb nonsense BS uh, the, the the fact that you have a connectivity that's smooth on a zero bar connection that's bragging rights that's something to brag about on a zero bar connection you can go back and you can watch the beta footage of me playing this game I was going up against like several people that had zero bar connections and you would have never guessed that it was zero bars just looking at the match by itself that's how smooth it was it wasn't no input delay or none of that other nonsense that you get with these other fighting games but the fact that I had a zero bar connection like zero bar in any other fighting game whether it be Tekken, Street Fighter or whatever that's basically a, a match you're not playing at all hell a three bar is a hell no but a zero bar that's a, a hell no for sure in this game a zero bar connection gets you smooth gameplay what? that's the one redeeming quality I do like about this game the online connectivity is Superb, at least from my experience. I like it. It was like one or two matches I may have had among the, the tens and tens of matches that I've had in the beta, but nevertheless, it was a positive experience, you know. Uh, um, and that kind of makes me happy to, to play it because fighting games have been so bad with online matchmaking and things like that. At the very least, despite me feeling a way that there's an enjoyable quality about finally getting a game that you know that plays smoothly. For the most part, I would say 90% of the time you're going to get a smooth match. You know, the other 10%, yeah, you may get connectivity issues, but the fact that 90% of the time you're getting yourself a smooth match and you end up getting, you know, a zero bar connections with smooth, no, no lag whatsoever, that's something to brag about. That's something that, you know, that's actually worth, you know, experiencing and getting, uh, and, and basically, you know what I'm saying, getting something that's worth your money in that regard you know so if you do like one button push combo games let me say it like this if you didn't buy dragon ball fighters buy this game you're going to have a better time with it because one the online matchmaking is based on you using a character to walk around and connect on like these platforms in order to get a match with people you don't have to worry about the matchmaking wait times and none of that you can just walk in there and just challenge people so that's good, and I hope that's the way it is for the rank mode. I know what it, what it was for like the casual lobbies and things like that, but I hope the ranking mode in this game also has something like that, which I believe it will. And you know that's something to get. So I would pick this game over Dragon Ball Fighters. If you're ever debating on whether or not you get Dragon Ball Fighters or this game, get Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. But you know the one button push combos is something like the fact that they call the one button push combos smart combos. That's the thing right there, and the, the amount of meter you were getting from it especially during the beta like the amount of meter you was getting from it and the other factors that came in it was just like dude the fact that this is one button push combo territory it's just like it's distasteful but the connectivity kind of balanced it out for me being somebody who hate games with one button push combos uh, I, I think it's lazy effort by the developers and it's catering to a crowd that doesn't really care to support the game so it's just you know that's an L for me then we got Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Now again, none of these games are talked about in chronological order or like release date order or whatever. What can we say about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite that is there's nothing positive to say about this game? One, it's just Marvel vs. Capcom. Except they went back to the two v two, the two versus two um, format that they had uh, with like Marvel superheroes and um, and X Men. Uh, and X-Men vs. Street Fighter back when the Versus series was really starting to become a thing uh, this game had a, a terrible gym system which they tried to fix but they failed horribly at it the Reality Stone, there was never a time not to use the Reality Stone the Reality Stone was OP as hell the, the Space Stone was probably like the second best stone in the game they had the Power Stone which is probably around there with the uh, you know what I'm saying, with the uh, the power stone was kind of around there with the space stone um then you had like the soul stone which was kind of around there with that because it revived the character you know then you had like the mind stone the time stone 
the, the mind stone in this game was completely unplayable. Like the way they made the the the, the, the mind stone was basically like a grab that made the character dizzy. Uh, you know, but it was like a close range grab. Like you could only do like a two hit combo into it, like punch then grab, and then go into whatever. That was like the best thing. But it was just like in an actual heated combat session, you wasn't finna get that off. You know what I mean? It was just like I don't care how confident you was. You st the, the mind stone wasn't even worth using. Even like the the uh, um, like the stone uh, ultimate form, like the stones. Wow, like the mind stone storm, uh, whatever. Like the gem storms. Um, those activations, the mind stone activation just gave you like it just refilled your like your meter quicker, and that's like. If you're good at combat, like you can just fill the meter up quick any goddamn way. So it was like, you know, why even waste time and effort on like they just in the look of the select screen didn't they didn't put no effort in the character select screen. The the, the lack of characters, of course, it wasn't their fault because of, of legal issues. They couldn't get X Men in the game, and it's like the game died within like two months, bro. Like it was just like L after L. Like they did everything possibly wrong with this game. And it's just like it died so damn quick. Even though you got loyalists to again to Marvel vs. Capcom or anything that Capcom puts out that still believe in this game and still think the game is so good, even though the game is shit. It's just like <laughs> like dude, like more power to y'all, cause man, like y'all playing with a dead horse. Like this game right here is finished. I there was a rumor that maybe Capcom might still release some support for the game. If anything, I say let sleeping dogs lie and just like, just take a L. Just take the L, learn from it, and when you make another Marvel vs. Capcom, don't do this shit. Like that's all I'm gonna say. Um, then we got King of Fighters 14. <sighs> King of Fighters 14, which was the real first one, um, that had that bullshit, that one button push combos BS, when no other King of Fighters game had one button push combos in it at all. That was like a turn for the worse for me. That, me personally, that's what, when I looked at fighting games and I was just like, damn, King of Fighters with, with simple ass combos like this. Like, the roster is fine. The roster is cool. The look of the game plays good. Um, it, it, it plays a little stiff for me, but I still liked it. It's just that the, 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 the distasteful one, dude, those one button push combos are not meant to be in fighting games, especially in a game that never had them historically. Why would you put him in this? Who are you trying to please? It's people that's been asking for King of Fighters games for years since Maximum Impact. And you gave him this. And now this game died quick. I rest my case. Then we got this Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. This shit is terrible. Even worse than I thought it was going to be. Like, for example, um, I came out with two videos, right? One was calling this collection a ripoff. It was a collection of ripoff. Look at the comments underneath that video. It was like uh, some people that even went back and they deleted comments because they just was they were just being mean and hate. I, I didn't delete them. They, funny enough, they went back and they deleted their own comments from underneath that video. So it's more than what you will probably see if you go watch it. But I called this game a ripoff and I made another video following up after the release of this game and called it ass because a lot of people that's playing this. They don't understand the history of these fighting games that are in this game and why Capcom has had a history of re-releasing uh, a video game with updates. Because one, back then, there wasn't a patch. You know, a lot of people can't really fathom that because they grew up in an era where, you know, like the internet was a thing and you could just download a patch for a game and fix any issues you have like that. Back then, the only way you could do any type of patches that you would have to re-release the game as an updated version hence the reason why when you look at this uh collection right here like you see like five street fighter twos um you know what i mean and things like that it's just <sighs> i mean bruh come on like you would have thought after all these damn years they would learn a lesson when it comes to and the, it's the, the, uh, okay so let me s slow myself down the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, I called it trash before it was released. I'm still calling it even more trash even after it's released because I understand that people aren't going to listen to me just like I said in the beginning of this video. 
people aren't going to listen to me because I'm the little guy. You know, my na- my face and my my name, my voice is not out there like say somebody like Maximilian or like other people like you know Vesper Arcade or other people that's out there like Alex Valle or whatever. So if I say something and it's factual, they're going to um, forgive me for the background noise, but their their voices are going to get heard over mine because they're more notable faces, right? But if, if somebody is saying some real shit, don't get mad at them for saying the real shit and then go to somebody else's page who's more popular. So again, like Maximilian or uh, Alex Valle or whatever, and they say something negative about the game, and you're like, oh yeah, you're right. So what was the point of you getting mad at me for? It's like, do you like the information that I'm bringing you or do you just like the person that's saying it? Like, you know what I mean? It's, that point kind of like tilts me. But other than that, um, five Street Fighter two games only four you know only really one game in that entire street fighter 2 franchise was actually playable because everything else before that was just like glitchy nonsense bs like any word you could think of it was just unpolished and it was just bad street super street fighter 2 turbo was the most tournament tournament friendly game and that's how you gotta scale fighting games these days is it balanced is it you know, polish. Did they actually try to work the game to try to? Did they, did, did, did they actually test the game? You know, did, did they test the online servers and all these other things? Did they do what's necessary to um to make uh the game playable and enjoyable, a, a playable, fair, and enjoyable experience? And they did not do that with this collection. Several people, including Alex Valle, Dark Side Phil, and several other people that you listen to over, you know, somebody like, like little old me. And y'all, you know, they basically said everything that I said prior to this game being released. It was going to be shit. All they did was put a bunch of emulated games in the collection and just gave it to you. They didn't try to test the servers out for the damn game. They didn't try to, you know, fix, adjust the speed. Because, um, if I'm not mistaken, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, it's more fast-paced than, you know, than it should be. And because of that, certain characters get an advantage in that game over other characters. Say, like, Ryu or whatever, they're getting, um, uh, they're better in certain versions of the game than the most relevant version of the game. You know what I mean? It, it, like, but basically, without me getting too deep, because it's just like, on top of the fact that they gave you five Street Fighter 2s, four of which aren't even worth playing, they gave you three Street Fighter Alphas. None of these Alphas are the best version of Street Fighter Alpha. Let me tell you something. Street Fighter Alpha 3 was so bad that they had to come up with an updated version called Street Fighter Alpha 3 Upper. And that had the updated uh, the updated roster, the balance changes. They basically fixed everything that they originally intended to put in Alpha 3. They didn't even put that version in this game, in, in this collection. So basically, you get ripped off right there. And then you got Street Fighter 3, Street Fighter 3 Second Impact, Giant Attack. Both of those games are just broken pieces of shit. And you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm looking at this whole thing and I'm just like, how do people come up with the, you know what I mean? Unless you're just naive and you're just biased towards anything Capcom is doing, how do you buy this shit and say, oh yeah, I got a good collection? No, you didn't. You, you got basically got, basically got gypped. You got ripped off. You got eight games in this that ain't even worth playing. You know, and... The online service for the games are just like, dude, like, I'm just... I'm done talking about that. It's trash. Then we got Guilty Gear Exar. And now let me talk about this. Because this is something that I, I really need to speak on. This is another game after this. Injustice 2. We're going to get to Injustice 2. Because I got something special I want to say about that. Who the hell is this? I don't know who that is. Uh, but yeah, Guilty Gear Exar. This game got released back in what? 2014, 2015? Uh, probably 2015, 2016. I don't remember. But when the game got released, you know, it was a fun game. It was enjoyable. You know, it was good, but there was controversy around it only because Arc System Works didn't announce prior that they didn't want certain things being live streamed uh, from this game. Like, they didn't want the story mode live streamed. And I didn't know that. Nobody knew it. It was just like people were telling me after the fact I had uploaded, you know, I, I, I played through the, the story mode of this game and I had. Uh, I played through it once with the English voice actors and people were commenting saying that they wanted the Japanese voice actors. So I played it again with the Japanese voice actors and I ended up getting a copyright strike damn near two in like 
within like hours within each other. But prior to that, I had took all the videos down because people kept coming to me telling me, oh, hey, you're sitting on copyright strikes. You need to take these videos down. So I took the videos down. And after the videos were already taken down, I guess I didn't take them down fast enough. I got the copyright strikes sent to me. But they didn't, again, Arc System Works did not announce anything in regards to them not wanting certain things to be uh, released. So I was happy when they did this, but it's still kind of fucked up. They announced that Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, they don't want people live streaming the episode mode, or, like really on some uh, Atlas Persona 5 shit. They did not want you live streaming certain things. And like that don't make no damn sense. Why would you release a video game in today's climate when you know people live stream and people, uh, you know, want to share their experiences? Why would you even release a game with these type of restrictions? That don't make no goddamn sense to me. Like, what's the purpose of me going out there and buying your game? But, but they, they were slick with it. And this is why I say they took an L for Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. They waited until last minute, you know, mere days before people, uh, you know, mere days before the game's release. Like, I guess it released earlier in, like, the Eastern uh, countries. Uh, again, forgive the background noise. Please forgive the background noise. Um... I guess it released in the Eastern countries and people were already getting in trouble for it. They released all the, uh, you know what I mean? They released this as basic, like basically pretty much on their Twitter that they don't want like the episode mode being live streamed. Now the music, I can understand them not wanting to, you know, people to upload that because they probably do like an OST release and want people to buy it. Okay, that's fine. But the story mode, like, you know what I mean? And then they only gave you permission to, to upload it like you can't upload it um past chapter two that's literally some persona 5 shit like you seen all the backlash they got from that you know what i mean but they waited until all the pre-orders were done and then they pulled this bullshit after everybody thought that they were gonna do right and um you know what i'm saying not, not pull no bs like this because they never did nothing like this before or as far as announcing it goes it's just like you know what I mean? It, it's just, it was just, it was basically like a sucker move. You wait until everybody pre-ordered the game, because you know if you would have announced this, those pre-orders would not would have came in. I, I pre-ordered my game from PlayStation Network. PlayStation Network basically fucked me over, and you, this is, you know, like a little gem I'm going to drop on you guys. If you pre-order anything from PlayStation Network, they tell you that you can get a refund for it as long as you didn't download the game but here's the gimmick they preload the game into your system basically in like the background to make it easier to download so basically they're counting that as you already downloaded the game you know what i mean so it, you can't cancel it and get your money back so go figure right uh so i would say you know even though people talk about gamestop and all that you what you make you i would say pre-order the game from gamestop or whatever the case may be, at least that way, you can like go and get your money back from the retailer. Don't pre-order anything from PlayStation Network. Fuck them. Now, here's the thing about Injustice 2 that I want to say. And it's nothing negative about the game. Injustice 2 has become distasteful literally because of association. Like, it's basically guilty by association. The game itself is not bad. The game itself has very good online matchmaking. Um... I've, I haven't had, you know, a bad experience with the gameplay itself as far as input delays and all that. I haven't had a bad experience with it. Uh, it's just that the, because of every all these other bad fucking games that have came out, it's, it put a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't, I didn't even want to play it. You know what I mean? Even when I intended to play the game, it's like Tekken 7 came out. Bad online matchmaking. All this other negative shit. And it's just like... You know, unfortunately, it's guilty by association. The only reason why somebody like me wouldn't want to play in Injustice 2, you know, uh, but it's a better game. It's not a bad game. It doesn't take an L. It just takes an L because of, of the climate that it's in. You know what I mean? Like, it's in a bad time for, 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 for fighting games. And I fear fighting games are only going to get worse from here on out. So, I'm going to end the video here, man. You guys tell me what you think. Uh, let me go right here real quick. Excuse me. Uh, let me go right here. You guys head to teespring.com slash the collective T H A C O L L E C T I V and uh, grab you some uh, World Warriors Collective Esports team merch right there. Got a lot of shirts on there. Uh, go there, check it out. Uh, see everything I got stickers, mugs, pillows. I got more stuff along the way. I got a global collection coming uh, soon. Some of you guys already seen that already. 
But uh, yeah, you guys can get free shipping on all your items by using code SENDIT, S-E-N-D-I-T, and get free shipping until June, June 4th. So get on there, get your, uh, get your merchandise. Until next time, man, peace. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll uh, see you guys later. Deuces. <laughs>